Okay, this is the supplemental video for the heating section of the Internet Home Inspection Standards of Practice course. And um, according to the standards of practice, the home inspector shall inspect the heating system according to, um, with normal operating controls. <laughs> Most HVAC systems, that's heating, um, ventilating, and air conditioning systems in a house are relatively simple in design and operation. They consist of four components, essentially. There's the controls, fuel supply, the heating and cooling unit, and the distribution system. The adequacy of the heating and cooling is often quite subjective and depends upon occupant perceptions that are affected by how the air is distributed, the location of air vents, return air vents, air velocity, the sound of the system when it's running, and similar characteristics. So HVAC adequacy is not within the scope of a home inspection. Residential HVAC controls consist of one or more thermostats and a master shutoff switch um, for the heating and cooling unit. Thermostats are temperature sensitive switches that automatically control the heating and cooling system and thermostats and shutoffs are considered normal operating controls. This is an inspection image of a thermostat, a normal operating control. This is an inspection image of an emergency shutoff switch, which is a normal operating control. This is an inspection image of a service shutoff switch, a normal operating control. According to the standards of practice, the inspector shall describe the location of the thermostat for the heating system, the energy source, and the heating method. When inspecting a boiler or furnace, an inspector should operate it only using normal operating controls such as the thermostat. The home inspector is not required to remove fixed appliance cabinetry. Energy source. Oil-fired and gas-fired furnaces and boilers provide heat to the majority of houses. Such fuel-burning units, whether they are part of a warm air or hot air system, should be serviced, maintained, and inspected regularly. No fuel-burning unit should be located directly off sleeping areas or close to combustible materials. This inspection image is of a mid-efficiency gas-fired forced air furnace. The inspection image here is of an electric heat pump furnace, and the inspector is grabbing the electrical line to the interior air handler unit. Electric resistance heating elements are commonly used in heat pump systems, wall heaters, radiant wall and radiant ceiling panels, and baseboard heaters. They are less frequently used as a heat source for central warm air or hot water systems. Such heating devices require service, maintenance, and routine inspections. Here's another inspection image of an oil-fired forced hot water boiler. Hot water heating systems, like warm air systems, include two types, forced and hydronic or gravity. Gravity systems are sometimes found in very old homes, but in most cases, such systems have been replaced or converted to a forced air system or forced hot water system. Heating and cooling method. There are two types of warm air heating systems, forced air and gravity. Gravity systems are occasionally still found in very old homes, but most gravity systems have been replaced or converted to forced air. Most forced air systems use natural gas or fuel oil as the energy source, but some use electric resistance heaters or heat pumps. The circulation blower and air distribution ductwork for electric resistance heating systems and heat pumps are identical to those as gas-fired and oil-fired warm air systems and should be regularly serviced, maintained, and inspected. The distribution system for heating and cooling method may be made up of supply and return ducts, filters, dampers, and registers. Supply and return ducts may be made of, made of sheet metal, fiberglass, or other materials. You can inspect the ducts for open joints and possible air leakage areas wherever the ducts are exposed. It's recommended that ducts should be cleaned every five years. Cleaning ducts is part of a, maintaining a healthy home. There should be no openings and return ducts in the same room as a combustion furnace. That's hazardous. hazardous. And this inspection image is of a home inspector reaching and touching the warm fins of an electric baseboard unit. According to the standards of practice, the inspectors shall report as in need of correction any heating system that did not operate 
and if the heating system was deemed inaccessible. The home inspector is required to make note in the report of any limitations to the evaluation of the system. Such notes may include that the furnace did not turn on and operate, the mechanical room was locked, or access to the boiler was blocked by personal storage items. Now, what are you not required to do? A lot. According to the standards of practice, the inspector is not required to inspect, measure, evaluate interior flues or chimneys, fire chambers, heat exchangers, combustion air systems, fresh air intakes, makeup air, humidifiers, dehumidifiers, electric air filters, geothermal systems, or solar heating systems. The inspector is not required to inspect fuel tanks, especially if they're underground and sealed, uh, concealed. You're not required to determine the uniformity, temperature, flow, balance, distribution, size, capacity, BTU, or supply adequacy of the heating system. You're not required to, and should never, light or ignite pilot flames. The inspector is not required to activate heating heat pump systems or other heating systems when ambient temperatures or other circumstances are not conducive to safe operation or may damage the equipment. You're not required to override electric thermostats. You're not required to evaluate fuel quality or verify thermostat calibration or heat anticipation or automatic setbacks or features or programs. The inspector is not required to measure or calculate the air for combustion, ventilation, or dilution of flue gases for appliances. While most inspectors will attempt to give a client as much information as possible about the heating system, it's, it is often the situation that its full evaluation is beyond the standards of practice or the expected knowledge and capacities of the home inspector. This in, uh, interior flue liner is um, of an old chimney stack and there is no interior flue liner, it's missing. It was never installed when the chimney was built 100 years ago. It is critical for all masonry chimneys to have an interior flue liner installed this is a major defect. The home inspector is not required to inspect the interior flues or chimneys. This is an inspection image of a removal of a buried oil storage tank in the front yard of a house in Delaware by the Delaware Division of Waste and Hazardous Substances. Underground fuel tanks are, by definition, not readily accessible or visible, but their presence should be reported if there were observed indications such as the tank fill and vent pipes. If the presence of an underground fuel storage tank is observed, the home inspector could note that in the inspection report and recommend that a specialist further evaluate. This inspection image is of a heat pump exterior unit at a house. The inspector is not required to inspect or determine the size, capacity, or BTU of the heating system. Any analysis of the adequacy or efficiency of a heating unit and its distribution is technically beyond the home inspector's ability. A heating system's performance should be evaluated by a trained and or licensed personnel. Most home inspectors check the service tag on the heating and cooling system. If there hasn't been any service on the system within the past 12 months, then service and further evaluation is recommended. The inspection image here is of a service tag of a furnace duct. Any system should be operated only in its normal environment and care should be taken not to damage any system or control by any inappropriate use. The inspector should return all controls to their previous settings after completing the inspection. The inspection image here is of a humidifier control on a furnace duct. <clears throat> the inspection image here is of a mid-efficiency gas-fired forced air furnace in the basement of a house. The home inspector is not required to measure or calculate the air for combustion, ventilation, or dilution of flue gases for appliances such as this heating system. InterNACHI has many courses on how to inspect HVAC systems and components. Please visit our education page and search for HVAC.